Legend of Total War here, and today I want to add my voice to the discussion around the pricing around Total War. Because uh, it's a hot topic at the moment, there's a lot of people discussing on the Total War subreddit about the pricing, and most of them are appalled by the price of the new DLC, which just got announced, and because it's being charged at the same price as the Chaos Dwarfs, uh, which is a race pack, and this is just a Lord pack. Race packs offer a lot more value, typically speaking, than race packs, so a lot of people are confused and outraged as to how this can happen. But... When you look at this from a business perspective, which I'll try to present to you, you can sort of make a bit more sense to it. Now, I'm not trying to justify what Creative Assembly is doing. What I want to do is try to explain why they might be doing something like this so you can understand it and then recognize what you can do about it because each and every one of you has a avenue that you can take so that you can be happier with the situation, which is at the end of the day what I want. I want everyone to be happy. I don't like it when huge parts of the community are unhappy. It's not good for anyone. Now, first thing we have to understand with this is the community itself. Most people who play Total War games are men. It's like 98% men. And they usually typically are aged between 20 and 40, roughly. Obviously, there's outliers. And there is a difference in like economic situations and also how much time that they have to play games as to what they're willing to put up with. So on one end of the spectrum, you've got people with a lot of disposable cash so and a lot of disposable time. So paying $35, $45, $55 dollars for a DLC that they're going to get 100 hours out of in the next couple of weeks is not a big deal for them. And then they'll often come onto these forums and, and express that. You know, what's the big deal? You're going to get 100 hours out of this. Why are you complaining about this price? It's clearly reasonable. You'll, you'll see those kind of comments. And they're not necessarily wrong in regard to their own narrow point of view. For people that are in that situation, you're right, there is a lot of value out of that. But then you've got people on the other end of the spectrum where they absolutely want this DLC. They're not saying they don't want it. What they're saying is, you know, they either don't have the money available because they don't have a lot of disposable cash for whatever reason. You don't need to be embarrassed about it. Any reason that you don't have disposable cash for playing games, it's not anything to be ashamed about. And it's not something you have to justify to anyone, including me or you for that matter. So. They've either got families that they would much rather put that money into their kids so they can have some fun or whatever. Who knows? Whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. That's their personal reason. And they they also don't have you know 10 hours a day to play video games. They might have two hours a week. And so paying you know, 25 euros to play something that they've only got two hours a week to play, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And so they're going to pick something else to spend their money on. Those are sort of the arguments and then everything in between. So that's kind of what's going on within the community. Now, first thing is that you guys don't need to be directing your anger inwards at each other to um, to attack each other. That's really not helpful. You especially see this stuff in the Steam discussion forum, which that place is an absolute cesspool. That, that place has no empathy whatsoever. They're just like straight to insulting each other. I would highly advise people stay away from the Steam discussion of this. But the Reddit is a lot more reasonable. And I don't personally have a great history with the Reddit, but most of the time it's a lot more reasonable, especially right now when you're seeing pretty reasonable discussion of Reddit. Obviously, things like Out of Your Mind at CA, but the overall discussion going in is, is pretty good. They're not rabid about it. They're not foaming at the mouth. There's obviously some resistance to it, but I'm not seeing huge amounts of toxicity. So it's actually pretty good here, which is something I actually wasn't really expecting. So don't direct your anger inwards. Don't even direct your anger towards Creative Assembly because it's not going to do anything because technically they haven't actually done anything immoral here. Now, if they do do something immoral, by all means, downvote their, uh, sorry, uh, uh, give them negative reviews on Steam and all that kind of stuff. But right now, this this isn't going to help because it's not an immoral thing that they've done. This is a business decision. So again, don't direct your anger at each other. It's not helpful at all. Instead, let's understand each other's point of views and have a little bit of empathy for each, each uh, people's uh, situation. Now, the next thing is understanding Creative Assembly. So we've got a rough idea, roughly, you know, where everybody lies in terms of the, the Total War community. Now, in terms of Creative Assembly, it's important to understand how this company works, right? On the global top seller list here on Steam, we can see that Shadows of Short Change, sorry, Shadows of Change is on the, the uh, global top sellers. Now, understanding Creative Assembly. Creative Assembly is not a moral entity and not necessarily an emotional entity. There are people at Creative Assembly that have morals and entities, but 
When it comes to this particular aspect, it's not a moral decision. It's a business decision driven entirely by profit. What would have happened is an executive goes to a sales department and says, okay, this DLC, we want to make a million dollars profit out of. You've got six months to make that million dollars profit, go. If you hit that sales target, you guys are gonna get a $10,000 bonus. I don't know what the exact details are, but that's, that's roughly how sales departments work. Because I've worked in sales departments before, and every single sales department that I've ever worked in had a commission based on quota if you achieved it. And if you didn't achieve it, you usually didn't make much money. And so what would end up happening is the most successful salespeople were extremely aggressive and extremely aggressive people tend to have very strong language, which is why at the beginning of the, uh, the channel, I had such strong language because I was a middling successful salesperson, which I hated and I'm glad I don't do, do it anymore, which is one of the reasons why I'm a bit softer of a, of a person now. Anyway bit of a um, bit of a tangent. So we've got sales department there. So what they're thinking right now is how are they going to get that million dollars? So they look at the total war community and they think, how are we going to get the most amount of money out of these guys? Because they don't care about the reviews. They don't care about anything else. They just want to get the money. That's their job. They're hyper-focused on it. So the business model that's being presented here is try to get the most amount of money out of each individual person based on what they are willing to pay. So some people are willing to pay more than others. For some people, this DLC is worth $40. For some people, it's worth $20. Some people, it's worth $10, right? And they want to get each and every one of you. Now, there's obviously some extremes at the other end where there's like, oh, to me, it's only worth $1. They don't care about you. You're gone, okay? <laughs> You're just not going to buy it. Um, so they want to get all of them. So how do we go about that? All right. So some people think that, okay, if we, if we charge $12, we'll just a hundred percent of the people all at once. Right. But then what's happened there is that you've had people that are willing to pay more for this DLC that have ended up paying less. Well, we can't have that. We, we cannot have people paying less than what they're willing to pay. And since in the past, these people have expressed the desire to credit facility to shut up and take my money, well, who are we to deny them that experience? So what the creative assembly has done has shut up, they're not talking about why they've done this, and they've put a price that they think people, some people, a small portion of people are willing to pay. Now this is probably 10, 20, 30% of the Total War fan base that are willing to pay this amount of price without, uh, without complaint, or maybe with a little bit of complaint, but they're willing to pay for it. And you can see here that this game, ha this DLC has pushed pre-orders. It has worked. Some people are willing to pay this price. And of course, you're gonna have people on the other end of that spectrum being like, oh, I was only willing to pay $12. Why can't you guys just not stop pre-ordering this shit on day one? You're making it worse for the both of, for all of us. This thing is the, the cashed up people, they don't care. It's like, oh, I'm willing to pay for it. It's no big deal. I'd just rather pay for it now and not worry about it. I understand that, right? But here's the thing. They're still trying to get your money, just not yet. So they set this price, the DLC launches, and then third-party key websites. They give they give their keys out to third-party sources like Games Planets um, and uh, their Steam sales down the track, like in the winter uh, uh, Steam sale, 25% off, 30% off, usually within the first year. And so the people then who are willing to pay, instead of, instead of paying 25 euros, they're willing to pay 19 euros or something like that. Okay, got you. At those, at those sales and with those third-party sites, we've got you. All right, we're gonna, we got your sales there. And then for the people that are like, no, I wanna buy it for $12. Well then a year down the track, when they do a 50% off or a 66% off, that's when they get you. So eventually over the course of time, they get your money, they get your sale at some point. But right now they don't wanna miss out on the cash cows, on the suckers, on the guys who are willing to pay big dollar for a, um, for, for a DLC. That's the stage of the marketing they're in at the moment. Now. In terms of how angry I suppose each of you needs to be at this point, largely depends on how insulted you've been by this explanation. You know, do you consider yourself a like honestly? If you're somebody that's pre-ordered this on day one, you should be aware that people are calling you suckers at this point because what you're doing is you're purchasing something, you're giving money to a company and getting nothing in return but a promise, which people who buy three weeks from now will get that exact same promise, except they got to keep their money for three weeks now. 
you might think, oh, but holding $30 for, for three weeks is not that big of a deal. And again, that's that's something that a cashed up somebody would, would make that assumption. But the reason why Creative Assembly does this is because if they take enough of these sales, let's just say 100,000 of these sales, right? So you got friggin' what, 3 million bucks. No, not really, because Steam takes a cut and you put it in a short-term investment account and you make some interest off that, you make even more money off of this. So it's even higher priced than it otherwise would have been, right? So that's that's why companies push for these pre-orders because they can squeeze a little bit more money out of you and every single dollar counts, right? And um, obviously that was to the extreme there in terms of a million dollars. I don't think they're gonna get that much at this point. Um, anyway, so they just, I'm just trying to reconnect to myself here. They try to get you at different stages of what you're willing to pay for it. And none of it is immoral or wrong. It's just, that's the particular business model, right? And if you don't like it, the only thing you can do is not play into it. You can purchase it at a sale later down the track, or you can just simply not purchase it at all. The only people that can really enact change on, <coughs> excuse me, on this particular number, it's not the sales stuff because now they've now got the approval to do this stuff. It's actually the people who pre-order on day one. If you guys, instead of pre-ordering on day one, instead um, waited until it was actually launch day before pre-ordering, Creative Assembly would be left sweating a little bit longer. And that's something that we'll see in another title, which I'll get into in a little bit. Now, there's no guarantee that that would change the, um, the, the price going forward, but putting a bit more pressure on them not to get those early pre-orders um, they they want to get those pre-orders, so they might consider in future either keeping the price the same or lowering it. See, this is what happened with Realm of Chaos, right? So not Realm of Chaos, um, uh, Forge of the Chaos Wars. People pre-ordered it, shut up and take my money, right? And to such a large degree that Creative Assembly went, oh, we probably could have charged more for this. Well, let's do that on the next one, even though the price is the same, but this is for a smaller product. So every time that you do that kind of attitude, shut up and take my money, Creative Assembly is going to try to push the envelope further because you've given them permission to do that with your wallet. You're voting with your wallet by doing that. It's not the wrong thing necessarily to do that. Just be aware that that is actually what's going on. Also, another thing, if you're on Mac and you've pre-ordered, just keep in mind that 99% of the time, these DLCs are never ready for Macs on day one. So on 1st of September or 31st of August, just be aware of that. Just because it's there, um, I almost always see a lot of negative reviews from people with Macs saying, oh, it says it's available for Mac, but it's not. It's usually a couple of weeks after. Just be, just be aware of that. Um, and that's kind of how the pricing goes. Now, there is upsides and downsides to doing it this way. The upside is that you get the most amount of money from your limited amount of player base. The downside is that it leaves people, especially on the other end of that spectrum, uh, with a bad taste in their mouth. Feels like having your, someone's dick rammed down, right? <laughs> and uh, it doesn't feel good. Now, when you trade goodwill for money, that has a negative impact on the community because um, people talk to other gamers. Uh, this is a very social media environment, right? And a lot of the times you can get new players into a franchise through good word of mouth. Now, if you if you are running a racket, like you've got one game, that's it. You're only ever going to make one game. Fucking scam, it doesn't matter. If you've got bad rep, it doesn't matter. You just move on to, to the next, next sing, single uh, standalone game sort of thing. But if you've got a franchise that has prestige on that name, like Madden, for example, or Total War Warhammer, or just Total War in general, you would want new players to come in and buy your old catalog of games and also to buy your future catalog of games. And the way you do that is by impressing them on the, the, the game that they found you on and by implementing goodwill. Now, the way that people can find that is by word of mouth and just good positive reviews, hearing good things about it. And you see that kind of thing happening right now with Baldur's Gate 3. Now, it's a game that I haven't purchased, a game that I wouldn't normally purchase because I'm not actually interested in Dungeons and Dragons. But I have heard so much good things about Baldur's Gate 3. It's got 500,000 concurrents. I've heard good things about Larian Studio. It's been on, I've been teetering on the edge of, of like buying their games for a while that over the next couple of days, as soon as I can find some time, I'm probably going to purchase two copies of this so that I can play with my wife as well because I've heard such good things, even though it wasn't actually on my to-do list, it wasn't on my wish list, but I've heard such good things about it, they're generating goodwill. And so that's one way that they can actually increase their profits by growing their 
um, by growing their player base. Now, at the moment with Total War Warhammer 3, I would say that the amount of people that is leaving Total War is about the same as the number of people that are uh, arriving at Total War. We are not growing as a community. Total War Warhammer 3's player numbers are about the same, maybe a little bit less than what it was in Total War Warhammer 2, where the player base was actually growing quite significantly. And this is largely because Creative Assembly keeps pissing away all of its goodwill. You know, there's so many issues that are being left unaddressed. They keep doing things like price hiking. These were things that were not really going on in Total War Warhammer 2. So it's a very big shift in attitude. And we're seeing that attitude reflected in the responses of both uh, like the, the people who are playing the game, I've noticed it definitely, but also in the people in the community that are leading figures, people who are like YouTubers like myself, you will have noticed that there is a big shift in conversation in tone into how I talk about Creative Assembly now compared to a few years ago. And that's because my opinions of them have changed. Back with Warhammer 2, I used to say nothing but nice things about them, right? Um, people would ask me on the street, hey, what do you think of Total War Warhammer? I'd say, get it. Creative Assembly is doing some good things right now. It was great. Now, they pissed away their um, their goodwill with the fan, with their historical fan base with Total War Three Kingdoms, but that's another story which we'll get into in a little bit. But during that time, it was all goodwill. So it was building up all of this goodwill ready to be pissed away for Total War Warhammer 3. And now they've got no goodwill left with me. They've made a whole bunch of promises that they were just empty promises they didn't fulfill. They've left the game in kind of it's an okay state but they're they're um they're leaving a lot of really bad issues that could be very easy fixes they're leaving that in for quite a long time and they're doing things like price hiking like this which while they have every right to do it causes discontent within the community which trickles back into causing problems for me as well so all of this stuff here leads me to be quite unfavorable towards Creative Assembly. I personally really want them to have an attitude adjustment. I need them to like do better. They haven't been doing a very good job lately. Behind the scenes as well, they've um, been very difficult to talk to. It hasn't been fun dealing with them. I still do deal with them because work needs to be done. But the attitudes have completely shifted. They've closed their ears off to, to feedback. They're just not interested in it. I've been trying for a really long time to try to get better deals with the embargoes so that we can be communi we can communicate honestly with you guys earlier. But they are absolutely adamant about not adjusting those... Um, those um, embargoes, that review embargoes and, and all impressions have to be left until the day before it's released because that's the fucking industry standard. And just because the industry standard doesn't mean it's acceptable, especially when they have such a bad track record of actually doing a good job. So there's constant conversations going on in the behind the scenes where I'm constantly like trying to drag them in, doing what kind of Melkor said, and I've really locked horns with them. I'm no longer just walking side by side with them without any conflict. It's just constantly two rams locking horns one way or another, and I'm constantly just trying to get them just to do better. And I feel like I'm failing every step of the way because they're just adamant about just continue doing these repressive bloody uh, policies. It's uh, not good for overall for the community, but good for their bottom line only, which they have every right to do, but I can't respect it. Now, there is a, like I said, there's a ramification of doing that. If you do that to a large enough extent, you'll end up with a situation like this. If we go all the way down, all the way down, this is what the future looks like when you piss away all of your goodwill and you only focus on profits. Which is every right to do that. But if you do it enough, this is what ends up happening all the way down and you find yourself over here. Total War Pharaoh. This is a game where the Creative Assembly have pissed away all of the goodwill that they had with with the historical fan base, it's basically gone. The people that played Total War Three Kingdoms, the people who played Shogun 2, even the people who play Rome 2, they're just not buying, they're not pe buying what Creative Assembly are peddling anymore because all the goodwill is gone, the trust is gone. And previously, any Total War game, when it was first put on, on Steam list here, would enter global top sellers very early on. But I've been monitoring Total War Pharaoh since the day it was put on here and it has not breached like even the halfway point up here. It, it cannot even get to this point here. Now, here's the thing with the uh, the global top sellers, right? With all this stuff here. The difference between this area here, the difference between that area there and this area here is actually pretty minimal. 
there's not that big of a difference in sales. And the difference between here and here, not that big of a deal. Not that big of a difference. Where things start to get into the extreme, where you start to go from hundreds and then you start to go thousands and then tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of sales is in this area here in the, like the top 10. This is where the, like this top 10 here would probably have more sales than the previous thousand before them. So the fact that this is here, where is it? Total with Pharaoh, this is probably pushing dozens, if not a hundred sales in a, in a short period of time and for this to be in this position here that is not good for this particular game now there's loads of different reasons why this could be happening but you've got let me go through some of them right you've got an extremely egregious um price hike with this this is the most expensive base game for a total war game this is more expensive than total war warhammer 3's base game now here's the big question right do you think that total war pharaoh and total war 3 kingdom just the base game alone offer similar value. There is no way in hell, no way in a million years that you would ever think that Total War Pharaoh offers as much as Total War uh, Warhammer 3. The only advantage that Pharaoh has over it is that it's a historical title over a fantasy title. So that's what it's entirely capitalizing on, which you can see here doesn't appear to be very much. The people who say, shut up and take my money, they appear to be absent. Now what could be happening here, and that's good if it is, is that a lot of people actually do want this game, but they're withholding their pre-orders until the very last minute. And if that's the case, I applaud you for doing that. You're probably making Creative Assembly sweat bullets. It's exactly what you should be doing. And you may end up getting better as a result from this, especially in future titles. Creative Assembly may consider uh, whatever their next Total War game is, not uh, pricing it any higher than this, because this one wasn't able to capitalize on those suckers, because the suckers aren't there, they're gone, right? Now, another thing, when we look at Total War Pharaoh, Total War Pharaoh is a reskin of Troy. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with tree, uh, with uh, reskins. For example, uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is such a reskin of Breath of the Wild. They reuse so much of the same assets, right? But I have absolutely no problem with it because the foundations made in Breath of the Wild... And this, is, this might be lost on some people because maybe they haven't played it, which you should play it. It's amazing. Get your wife's boyfriend to buy you a Switch. Um, Breath of the Wild is amazing. It's a 10 out of 10 game. And then Tears of the Kingdom is just builds on top of that. So you have an amazing foundation and then you can reskin it. And there are plenty of other games that have done this and it's totally fine. But when you have an initial foundation that is completely flawed, then you can't really build a pyramid on top of a cracked foundation it's kind of ironic that we've got total pharaoh for that right and troy is a cracked foundation the campaign side of things is fine there's no issues with that the bartering system is good uh the way that the ai um acts is kind of stupid but um that's the case with all total war games but the campaign side of things is fine but the battle side of things with total war pharaoh is almost unanimously considered one of the worst battle experiences across any total war game and you've imported that situation straight back into total war pharaoh and maybe even made it worse because the impact of any of the decisions made on the battlefield just see it feels so limp noodle where certain um, tactical advantages you might have in unit matchups where it might have like a 10% bonus versus swords or whatever those bonuses are lost immediately as soon as you play on higher battle difficulties where the weather system is just a gimmick where it just applies to the entire battlefield and everybody is affected by it equally in which case it may as well just not exist in the first place if it's like oh every unit is going to be 10% slower or every unit is going to take a slight amount of damage or every unit is going to have 20% less range well it's going to affect every unit right that is able to that it applies to and so it ends up having very little impact there's no way to have it work on just one side and not the other side because all sides are used to fighting in the desert because it's a fairly isolated area this is, these are systems put in place that have no real impact and so they're relying on gimmicks because the game has no actual substance itself if you have a look at what units are available it's just melee infantry which you know swords spears axes which are basically just rock paper scissors of each other which again will be thrown out the window as soon as you up the battle difficulty then you've got missile units 
and then you've got chariots and that's it there's no cavalry like horses you got no single entities which by the way it shouldn't have single entities but you don't have a lot of variety you're not going to be fighting different battles over and over again the cultures appear to be mostly the same they've got different tags on them with different stat bonuses oh this guy here has got extra ammunition but this guy here has got extra melee attack you know these are insubstantial bonuses um insubstantial differences where you take medieval 2 for example you've got england England has a lot of units with archers that have that have uh, able to deploy spikes. And if you play as France, you got none that can do that. Actually, there might be one that can do that. It's been a while since I played it. Or if you play as the Holy Roman Empire, Holy Roman Empire has got no archers, but they've got really heavy infantry, which are bugged. And <laughs> it's a great game still. And if you play as the Turks, you've got loads of options of horse archers, but you have limited uh, options for... Um, for infantry and all of this leads to asymmetrical gameplay which increases the depth of it and all the good total war games have asymmetrical gameplay or if they don't have asymmetrical gameplay for example shogun 2 which has symmetrical gameplay tactics actually matter a flanking charge has massive impact using the yari wall has massive impact archers uh, good against sieges but otherwise relatively low impact killing the enemy generals have high impact i watched a twitch stream with this one where um where they were playing and they were doing an ambush battle and they killed the enemy general and the enemy's units just didn't care they were like all had the discipline trait or whatever and they're just like oh yeah so uh he's uh, his units they don't really care that the general died what what <laughs> what it's just like, what is the point of fighting these battles then? So you've got this really... Man, a bit of a review on this particular video, uh, on this particular game. So you've got a situation where it's just a reskin of Troy and being offered at a premium price and people are seemingly not buying it. And it's actually quite glad that people are just not seeing through this quite frankly just bullshit excuse of a game. And uh, this is a situation that is caused because of poor goodwill. If they had goodwill, if they had ended things amicably with Three Kingdoms, with other historical Total War games, then it is quite likely that they could have peddled this garbage and actually sold heaps because they've done it before. They peddled Thrones of Britannia, right? Thrones of Britannia, I warned people about Thrones of Britannia. I told you it was peddled garbage, right? And people didn't believe me. They're like, no, Creative Assembly, they're good. And they bought it. But now I don't even have to say anything about Total War Pharaoh. Didn't have to say a bloody thing, except in live streams. And people aren't buying it because what's being said, what's not being said is actually more potent than what is being said because there's lots of Total War YouTubers that played Total War Pharaoh that didn't make videos on it. And the ones that did make videos on Total War Pharaoh were like, man, this game is a Troy too, you know? It's a, it's a situation where their goodwill has just run out. Now, this is something that Creative Assembly is going to have to basically start again from scratch with, with Pharaoh. But it's a matter of, are they going to ditch that game before they've actually had the chance to do it? Because one thing that I'm noticing with Pharaoh is that they're marketing it entirely to people that have never played a Total War game before. These are the kind of things that we're dealing with as the Total War community. It's like trying to get Creative Assembly to do better, to try to actually increase goodwill so that more people actually uh, feel good about playing these games. And the thing is, if you go and play something else, you get immersed in that particular franchise and then you, you spend hundreds of hours there and then you forget about um, the Total War Warhammer stuff. As a games creator, if you've got somebody suck it into your game and they're absorbed into it, you do not want them to leave, especially a game like Total War Warhammer that has a huge amount of replay value. You do not want any of your players going anywhere else because they might forget about you because there's amazing games out there. Total War Warhammer 3 has not innovated at the same level of Total War Warhammer 2 and there are amazing games about to come out. Look at this. We've got Starfield coming out soon. How the fuck is Total War Pharaoh going to compete with Starfield? Look at this. I've got it on watch list. Sorry, wish list. Um, which, by the way, I haven't pre-ordered because I'm not a fucking sucker. You know, they're not going to get my pre-order. And that's $120, by the way. That's a good... Like, I think that's... I'm willing to pay that because <laughs> I played a shitload of Skyrim, right? I think that'll be worth it because I've got goodwill with Bethesda because the last and really the only game I played with, with them is... Um, Skyrim. That being said, I'm very much aware that Bethesda is pretty much just as bad as, as Creative Assembly, but at least from my personal experience with it, I'm looking forward to playing Space Skyrim. And so I will buy this on the 6th of September. They haven't earned my pre-orders, <laughs> but I will buy it. So these are the things that Total War Pharaoh has to compete with, and also the things that Shadow of Short... Sorry, Shadow of Change has to... <laughs> has to um, uh, compete with, except that they can manage to do it. That is why this price is, at least from a business point of view, justified. Now, you can hate that. I hate it. I wish they would drop the price a little bit. I think they're price gouging. I think they don't need to do this. I think they're trying too hard to get too much profit. 
but from a business point of view, they're not doing anything wrong. And if you're upset by this, I'll do my best to help you to try to find some good deals. Maybe I can manage to get some free keys from somewhere. I don't usually like doing giveaways, but obviously this stuff is a bit of a sore point. I don't want people turning away from Total War Warhammer because I'm worried you're not going to come back. Because this is the thing as well. If I ever turn away from Total Warhammer 3, I'm worried I won't be coming back either. Kind of like what happened with live streams. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of all this. Remember, it's most important thing is to be kind to one another. That if you're from a different perspective, you know, if you've got a cashed up situation, you got loads of free time, don't be picking on the people that don't have that much time and vice versa. You know, the people who are pre-ordering it on day one understand that some people just don't give a fuck and you can't force people to give a fuck. You just can't. Um, and main thing here is that I would urge Creative Assembly, you, you need to start improving your goodwill with other creators. You're on the verge of, of a revolt <laughs> with your creators. It's not good. And uh, you, you're just going to lose their support really soon if you don't start doing well by people. Saying that something is industry standard is not going to cut it when the industry is falling behind other industry leaders that are not doing what you're doing. So I would urge you to improve, be better. You know, I remember when I was put under the ringer for being a dickhead, and I'm so grateful for people for doing that. You gave me such a hard time, and the Reddit as well, Cook gave me such a hard time, but it made me a better person, and I'm so grateful for it, and it enriched my life, and that's all I want Creative Assembly to do. Be better, and it will enrich your life. You guys are doing fine. Just be nicer to each other. That's all you gotta do. All right, now hopefully we sort of understand our position with everyone. I hope that um, this will, will end up being a good um, DLC. I don't know. We'll cut to that at a later date. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. Later, guys. Bye.